What we do, we go in this corner here, mm -hmm. we go up to 52 steps up to this level, then we walk along here, all the way down this side, yep. all the way down here. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the medieval glass window there, yeah. then we walk along this side, and we go down there, down here, up this side, and then go halfway down, just back where it crosses to mm -hmm. there. Then we have to do the bowling bit, we walk all the way back to this corner. Yep. We then walk across the north transept above those windows inside those windows. We go up about 80 steps mm -hmm. up here, then we'll be inside the roof space up here. We then walk along the walkway all the way from there, and then we exit the central tower. We walk around the central tower all the way around, and then if it's dry, which will be, we go up and up about 30 steps and we'll be outside on the roof. So oh. should have a view of it above. Oh my gosh. Right, then we come back down these same steps and then we walk along the outside of the nave roof all the way down to the west front. And then we get to the west front, we visit the bell chamber, uh, a place where we call a, a windlass. And, and just about we come down the into too. the yeah. shop. Yeah. That's where we finish. Yeah. It takes about an hour and a half and three quarters. <laughs> just use it like a storage area. That's what we use it for now. <laughs> what do you think they used it for before? Uh, they would have used the pilgrims would have come up these steps and used this this walkway. <coughs> there would have been about eight chapels up here together and eight chapels downstairs. So when they're pilgrimage, they would come up here, they would have visited the chapels <coughs> and moved on to the following day. To wow. But these have been like the cheap seats for all whatever's going on downstairs <laughs> as well. <laughs> but, yeah. There's only about 80 to 100 monks in this building. Yeah. So it wasn't very busy at all. They just prayed a lot from about, two, from about two in the morning, yeah. seven times a day. <laughs> so, wow. Seven times a day they used to pray, yes, the monks. Are there any monks left? At the no, there, no, no, there's no monks. They left ages ago. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll just tell you a brief history of the, okay. this cathedral. The first uh, abbey or monastery was built in 654. Uh, that was destroyed by the Vikings when they invaded. Then uh, in 870 they started to build the second abbey. Uh, that was destroyed by fire in 970. In yeah, 970, that was destroyed by the fire and that raged on for nine days and it destroyed most of the town as well. Then they started to build this one in 1118 and they finished in 1238. So it took 120 years to build from start to finish. Wow. They started on the, in the east end, that side, mm -hmm. and worked all the way up and they finished at the west end. So they didn't, it took so long because they didn't build in the winter time because it's too cold. So uh, they only built in a, a good month when it's dry and the weather is fine. Oh. Right. But what started the fire in the 1800s? Just natural or did um, someone actually... It was a curse, they say, didn't they? It, is. Yeah. it, started, it, it started in the bake, bakehouse in oh. the cathedral. Uh, the monk, a monk was cursed for some reason. I don't believe it was. And that was his curse that burned yeah. the place down. <laughs> yes. So. Wow. If you, if you look behind you, this where we, you'll see these two windows here, this one, yeah. Yeah, this one. These are the only two original windows from when the cathedral was built. They wouldn't have had glass in them at the time, they'd have been at straw bales or hide. And the only reason these two windows survive is because uh, there used to be a lady chapel, we call it a lady chapel, outside on this wall. And these windows backed onto it, so be, there'd be no point in changing these windows to the bigger window as you can see now, up there and downstairs, because it lets more light in. But these two, the Lady Chapel is behind that, so there's no reason in uh, oh, changing these windows at all. Wow. So that's when the Lady Chapel was there about 1290 up to about 1650, when it, when it was taken down. Because Cromwell smashed a lot of the glass in there and it's in derelict, so they took it down. And a lot of stone there, they went on to build Paul Paul, which is the set time. All the stone in this cathedral is, uh, comes from Barnock. It's all limestone, as uh, you can see. Also, these windows, <coughs> when they put these larger windows in, up here, they actually raised the roof 
from this level up to there to accommodate bigger windows. That's why the brickwork is very shoddy above there. They just, just bricked it up and then raised the roof. And that is fine up here when they put the windows in, but when they put the windows in downstairs, the bigger windows, they had to put the points of the windows, they actually come from the floor. You'll see bumps all the way around on this side and the other side, oh, where the windows come, actually come through the floor. So they've got to raise this floor up. So the actual bumps is where the points of the windows come through the floor. If you look at this tower now, this behind you, it's been rebuilt twice since it was put up. Uh, in 1330, or before 33, it used to be two storeys or two levels higher than what it is at the moment. So it's quite high. <laughs> and going back to these templates, these were made by Pearson when he took the tower down. So he had a template to build them exactly up again as, as they were. So these templates were laid on the floor and that is the outline of these pillars laid at, uh, as it goes up. And there's six of them because although there's only four columns, there's six because two of the tower was slightly different as they go up in height. And each one has got a uh, marker in the middle there which, of which pillar it's, it stands for. So. <laughs> So, what is that made out of? Is that wood? That's, that's just wood, that is. It's wood, oh. yes. yes. Wooden template they are. But nowadays, if it had, had to be ever done again, they would use computers. So oh, yeah. They'd, <laughs> they'd be obsolete, but we still keep them. Yeah. <laughs> just for prosperity. Yeah. Here you can see remnants of stone which had come off the building over time. Uh, this is done by pollution and acid rain. This has only happened in the last 120, 150 years. Mm -hmm. So we've had a lot of uh, we had the railways, uh, brick, the brick pits, uh, the, the brick, the brick yards over there, and uh, they created a lot of pollution. And this is the result of pollution over the years, about 150 years. It has happened. So if you look up here, you'll see these pillars have got nice tracing all the way around compared mm -hmm. with the others. They're all plain. So we reckon up this end mm -hmm. of the cathedral, this would have been a chapel of some description. Uh, you can see on this wall here when we go around, you'll see there's a painting on the wall, there's, there's rosettes and squirrels, and so they say this would have been a chapel, and when the pilgrims on their pilgrimage, they would come up here, uh, visit the chapel, and then when, when the next day they would have moved on from their pilgrimage all the way around. So that is would have been a chapel. There were eight chapels downstairs and one for eight chapels up here as well. So, these are what they call stonemasons marks. Uh, that's how the stonemasons used to get paid by the marks on the stones and uh, the quality of the brickwork. So that's how they used to get paid. There's these type, there's other type, there's one there, there's crosses. So we've got yeah. the stone. Yes. Yeah. 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 So it's um, all that writing. Yeah. Not so yeah. many uh, No. <laughs> the same at this, this end as they are at the finish of the other end. So that's 120 years different. So no one and person can start to do it. That's 19th century. A lot yeah. Yeah. Until, until about the 20th century. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Graffiti so in churches so was part of the trade of the Accepting them because people used to put their name. Their name into I've the seen them where they've scratched a, it in the stone as well. Yes. Yeah. You know, please pray for me. Wow. I find stuff like that really interesting. Yeah, so these, are these like a branding? Yeah. Almost. Uh, they use them to get, to get paid. Uh, so you'd have said, oh, that was George Jones, that was John Smith. You yeah. did that one. <laughs> Well, you see the same, same marks, this end, and that end, mm -hmm. so the same, same stonemason family. Yeah, so the father might have worked up at that end, and the grandson might have been at this end. <laughs> well, vice versa, yeah. Oh, they started at this end. Start at this end, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they all start in the east, because then they can hold services at the high altar. Uh, the high altar's always at the east end. <laughs> <laughs> they can start getting the collections in early. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is quite 
narrow. For me, anyway, it's quite narrow. Yeah. So. Oh, I see. That was, uh, that was all shot out by Cromwell. So that's this one. Yeah, so that's, that was, that was really done. So is all that gold leaf? Um, it's probably not gold, it's probably gold paint rather than gold leaf. Mm. Yeah. You save that for downstairs. <laughs> some of this might be gold leaf, some of these. Yeah. It's incredibly intricate, isn't it? And I'm guessing at one point there was like um, a scaffold going all the way up there so that someone could uh, yeah, work on it. Yeah, there would have been in, in the case of this, um, but the main ceiling down there was painted on the floor and nailed in place. Oh, okay. Afterwards. That so, sounds like the more sensible way. <laughs> yeah, well, the reason we know that is that the, if you get really close to that ceiling up there, you can see the nail heads have no paint on them. Okay. So they just painted on the ground, just hung it in. Ah. They didn't bother to paint the nails. <laughs> and then here you've got some shields. There's a shield there. Yeah. And that's from the medieval knights who would administer the cathedral after the Norman conquest. So okay. they were allowed to be buried close to the high, the high altar. Oh, for, so, yeah. And the, uh, the building just out to your left, as you go out the cathedral, there's an archway. And the, the building at the top of that archway is the medieval knight's chamber, ah. which is still... Um, where, where are you supposed to see the monk? Because I know that there's a story of a monk. Yeah, I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> there, is, um, there is a story that a monk comes here at night, but I think it's fabricated. I don't... Well, yeah. Not many people have. I like the stories. Yeah, nobody's, <laughs> nobody's ever seen it. There is a door. There is a doorway at Ely Cathedral, mm -hmm. and if if you get any dogs go into the by that doorway, they will bark at the doorway, and it's, there's some steps leading up to oh. the doorway, and dogs don't go in there. So that's an interesting one. Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, what else have you got here? So, so is that marble? That is um, um, Italian marble on the columns, mm -hmm. and then Derbyshire alabaster on the top. It looks very similar, so, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it is very similar. So the brown the brown bits are Italian. Mm. Um, as is the floor, which we'll tell you about a bit later, that's Italian marble. Um, but this is a copy of... Um, uh, an altar canopy or baldacchino, as its correct term is, um, from the church of uh, Santa Maria de Cosmo okay. in Rome. So, um, very suave. So, you've got St. Peter on the back, mm -hmm. who's the uh, patron saint of the church, Christ on the front, and then you've got the four evangelists around the pillars. Mm. Wow. It's, it is, it's a beautiful piece of work. Yeah. I'm not religious myself, but I can appreciate the work and yeah, yeah. the architecture. I mean, it's, um, the design is very, um, some of the design is very Byzantine. Yeah. In, in its origin. The other thing to notice here is that if you look along this line here, mm. just past the choir stalls, see the last pinnacle on the choir stall? If you take your eye up from that, about six feet, you'll see that there's a change of level in the, in the stone. It's like a kink in the stone. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so you're looking along that first yeah, sort of yeah. now, floor, if you there's like. There's two theories behind that. One is either the, uh, the ground has slipped, um, or more likely is that it's, it's an inbuilt imperfection because the stonemasons didn't believe they could build as perfectly as God could build. So they put in a slight imperfection. There. If you look at abbeys and cathedrals all yeah. over the place, they, they're similar things. So. They, because I've, I've been to a few and I've been told about various, they're almost like little Easter eggs, aren't they? Yeah, yeah almost. And then behind you here, this, this, this is the only medieval stained glass we have left. And again, this was shot out by Cromwell. Mm. And you can see it's a real... So those windows around there would have been more like this. Yes, they would have been, yeah, almost certainly. Uh, 
the only place to see, well, the main place to see medieval stained glass now is Canterbury. Yeah. And that is almost all medieval stained glass. But this is, um, I mean, they just pieced it together as best they could. So, you know, you've got a head there that's not attached to a body and so on. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that the, the people are probably the original bits and the... I'm guessing that the colours are the sort of the, fill, the filler bits, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, they are, yeah, yeah. Let's see, this one looks a little bit more complete. Yeah, this is Victorian. <laughs> Uh, some more recent dates on that one. <laughs> some more recent dates on that one. Yeah. Am I right in what I've been told that there's a legend of a, a, a tunnel? Well, from Fort to... Yeah. There is, a, there is meant to be some tunnels, yes. Uh, but I don't think they do go to Fort Paul, though. I know they used to go to the river over to the, the other side. There was a tunnel, but the monks used to use to ship all their contraband wine and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, they used to go under tunnels because when they're building the new university, uh, which as you see when you go up on the top, yeah. one of the diggers actually fell into one of the tunnels, which was oh. there. <laughs> Thank you for asking that. <laughs> yeah. So there is actual tunnels, secret tunnels, which come from here over to the, over to the other side. We're not sure about the one going to Fort Paul, though. I'm not sure if that's, oh, yeah. there was one or not. Yeah. Well, there was some um, conjecture about whether there were tunnels going out to Crowland Abbey and Thorny Abbey, but. I, I don't think that's it seems a long way, doesn't it's it? Too far. It's too far. It's yeah. a big too far. bit of a civil engineering nightmare going out <laughs> yeah, that way, I think. Yeah, especially like doing the channel tunnel. I don't know yeah. If they can build something like this, they surely can build a tunnel that far. I can't believe yeah. some poor little digger fell in. That was a surprise. Oh my god, I would have been scared. <laughs> this dates from about 1615, this one. So, before Cromwell invaded or came here, uh, some bright spark took that front tower at the front, so it is very elaborate and they quite well wouldn't like that. So they moved that one out, put it into the gardens, and, uh, and this one would have been used in its place. Very simple. Just very a big one, really. Plain, plain, very plain. Is that a bed lining? It's lead, it's lead lined, Jess, it's lead lined, Jess. And we're not sure what the holes are for. It could have been some sort of uh, it could have had wood facing, or it could have been some sort of cover mm. which was locked up to keep the holy water secure. So yeah. that would take oh. them, so, <laughs> so, so this was, so that was taken out in, just before Cromwell came, and this one was used in 1615. And about 400 years later, they found the font they took out in, in a garden which was being used as a flower pot. So, <laughs> so they brought it back in and it's installed in at the front again about 1920 and this one was brought up here then. Oh, wow. so the font is made to say all water marble, this is just a plain simple font. So they cleaned it all up, they put it on, they put it on a new base underneath and that's what you see at the front at the moment. Along the sides you get the floor oh, yeah. pattern that you can't actually see from down below. Yeah. Uh, Why? It dates from 1220 to 1240, it's 1220 this end and 1240 at the far end, there's a progress through. Um, Is that just how long they took to, yes, to get from that end to that end? Yeah, 20 years. 20 years, yeah. Wow. And same person, same people? I don't know. Oh, okay. It's a slate of German oak, uh, oh. it's painted on the floor and then nailed up in position. So I know that because the nail heads have got no paint on them. So, oh, okay. so, so it's actually painted on the floor, then put up in position. So there's it's the longest one in Europe. Is one, this is one in four. Uh, it's the longest. This is 100 meters longest. The ceiling. Uh, the others. There's one in Sweden, one in Swi Switzerland, and, and one in Germany. All the, all the same, similar. But this is the longest and the more mostly decorated one. As you come into the cathedral, the first panel that you see is um, is the is the god is the goddess Luna. Oh, like the moon, like Aztec, not Aztec. A, she's a pagan goddess. Okay. Yeah. So why would you have a pagan goddess in a Christian cathedral? Any idea? The Normans, the Vikings were all for pagans. Yeah, um, that's possibly part of the reason. 
The other part, the other reason is, or the likely reason is that um, they believed in medieval times that if you looked at the moon too long, it would send you crazy. <laughs> so that's where we get the word lunatic from. No way! I we got to tell that. So the awesome. goddess Luna, um, why would you have a, go- a pagan goddess in a cathedral? Well, because they were trying to Christianize that goddess by saying you can look at the lunar, look at the moon as long as you like, and it won't send you crazy. Wow. You know, it's hocus pocus. It's like a rebranding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> it's, it's a rebranding. So we're now above uh, the north transept roof of uh, the cathedral. And you can see that that plate on there says 1924. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all these timbers were replaced, or most of them were replaced in 1924 because they had a death watch people so all of them apart from this one and there's another one further away Paul yeah they're filled together I think yeah yeah anyway. this is one of the original medieval beams here and you can tell this is this is older because it's very rough uh, Roughly finished on there, so it would have been done with what's called an ADZ, A-D-Z-E, which is like a thing that just chopped wood away, like that. a bit like an axe. So they weren't afraid this one had the beetles as well? No, and the, the-, <laughs> the theory behind that was that they thought this, the beetles didn't like light. Oh, okay. So what they did, as a result of that, they put all these windows down the side, so they're all down this roof, and the other roof, and the main roof, down the nave, because they thought that the, the vehicles were, didn't like the light, but probably that's not true. No. Uh, the, re- <laughs> the reason is that probably this beam was grown in a different type of soil, so the beetles didn't like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> So they left Jeez, I kind of like the idea about the light. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so you've got two types of beam here. You've got this queen's post beam, goes all the way down, that supports the roof structure. And then these beams here, which are supporting the, the ceiling here. <laughs> This wasn't designed for me. (laughs) (laughs) It's quite high. (laughs) If you worry about the height, look at the wall and look at the floor. (laughs) Okay, just a a little explanation of what we're looking at here is that when they built the when they rebuilt the tower, uh, they put these gothic shaped arches in, a slightly pointed one there, mm. uh, to, to make sure that the tower was strengthened okay, because they, they bear the weight much better than the rounded arches, or the Romanesque arches. Mm. And then um, these windows up here, after the fire, they were double glazed, because um, otherwise this tower acts like a chimney, it, you know, it sucks up the air, so um, they put the windows in to stop um, to stop the air being brought up. But um, if you look at the ceiling, the ceiling is um, emblematic of the sufferings of, of Christ on the cross, so you've got God in the middle there, and then you've got symbols of the crucifixion on the, all the way around, so you've got the sphere that was... Um, he was pushed into Christ's side. You've got the hammer and the tongs for the nails. You've got the chalice for the blood. Um, uh, what's that one for? Sure. Is that the swords? Oh, the swords, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then the, the nails uh, driven into Christ's hands and feet. And then, of course, the cross there. Yeah. And then around the outside, you've got. Um, some emblems of the four evangelists, and then 
dann am, am besten 10, äh, zwei maximal mit dem John. And then here, again, these bits here, and then some there, above us. There, 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 again, pagan green men. So, again, that was a kind of Christianizing of the, of the pagan symbol. Uh, the green men were symbols of fertility in pagan culture. And uh, so they were kind of saying, well, we'll have the green men, but um, you know, they're not going to be linked to pagan beliefs anymore. They're going to be linked to uh, Christian beliefs. And you'll see, the pay, you'll see green men in the churches all over Britain. Um, you can go to <laughs> And then uh, have a look under this. Um, uh, these pilaster columns here. You've got the funny looking faces here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long old climb. Over 200 steps from the bottom all the way up here. Wow. Oh, it's a long way to fall down. <laughs> Let me show you what you can see from here. So, out in the, that's towards the east. So, we're looking at the brickyards, not many chimneys are out of the brickyard, but there would have been a lot at one time. And uh, St John's Church, which is there, yeah. that used to be over here, in St John's Road. Oh, okay. And because there was, um, when they built that, there was, um, activity on the marketplace which meant they couldn't build it in exactly the same east-west axis as the cathedral so it's slightly off ah. the east-west axis the incomplete tower there uh, on the on the left hand side and you can see if you look at this i see what you mean where there was going to be two towers and then the front and it would have been the same yeah so what do you normally fly? Uh, they put flags up on special occasions. Special, on mm. special days, yeah. So like... Like the Queen's fe- Jubilee thing? Queen's yeah. Jubilee, that yeah. will be one, yeah. Um, special Saints days. Uh, when they ring the Peter Bells at eight, it takes over three hours to ring all together. Mm-hmm. There's so many uh, combinations they have to ring. Uh, they call it change ringing, yeah? It's not done abroad, it's only done in this country, change ringing. Uh, if it is a ball, or in Europe, the bell just swings side to side like that. And you go bong, bong, bong. For here, they actually do a tune, play a tune as such. So that's, that's what they call change ringing. Up to 1968, uh, or 1986 it was, the bells weren't rung here because uh, they envisioned the movement of the bells above and the, and the create, creation of the, the air movement would bring the tower down. But, so they had they, a team of engineers in, and they had their measuring equipment, they put them on the walls, they measured all of the, the movement and they said it's perfectly safe to bring all, all the bells now up above. Because some of them are swinging this way and some of them are swinging that way when they're all bringing together. And the actual, uh, this bell tower is actually double skinned. You've got an inner skin there which takes the movement of the tower and the outer one takes up the, the slack sort of thing. So it's when you are sitting up here when all bells are ringing, there, you can actually feel the movement of the tail thing moving. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's quite safe. <laughs> so, <laughs> so all these timbers and everything are hundreds of these years are old. Yeah, the original mm-hmm. beams. Uh, they're not they're not they're not bowed, but they're not actually bowed. They like most really look for a tree of that shape, with mm. that with that curve in it, because that's more stronger than a straight beam would a uh, straight beam uh, would have been so that's why it's curved like that. Yeah. It's not like it's sagging, but that's how it is put up in the first place. But these are more visual beams. Uh, we're actually on a false floor here. That's not a small door there. This is actually a false floor. And there's a big hole in the middle here, underneath, and that's where the bells are brought up from ground level, and they, then they go up into that corner there and then take it up here. Do you have to? Originally, the, the ropes would have gone down to the ground level, about 100 foot below us. And that was the base actually factory because the rope stretch and it's very difficult to play the bells in. So the shorter the rope, the better it is for the building is. How often do the bells have to come out? 
do they ever come um, out? The, it's a good question. When they were first put in, by, there was put in by a person, Henry Penn. He had a foundry down in Rivergate. Uh, he made all the bells at the time. Uh, we don't know if he's not very good at it, or, or he's a friend of someone who made them. <laughs> but after a little while, they start to crack and out of tune. So then they had the option of either repairing them or getting new ones. And as it happened, uh, uh, the redundant church in Leicester, there's a plaque on the walls behind you, uh, uh, John, from John the Divine, which had uh, 10 redundant bells there, to, which would convey con con the Queen Victoria. So they, them 10 bells come from there to here, then they had a fundraising for another two bells to make 12. Uh, uh, the heaviest bell weighs about a tonne and a half, oh which is about the weight of a small car. And the small one is, is, ten, is a tenor bell, I think it's the smallest one, over there somewhere. This is, um, this is the medieval winding gear um, that was put in, um, in the uh, 11th century when the cathedral was built. And uh, it, it comes apart, as you can see, it's, you can take all the pegs out. Um, it's like a big flat pack piece of furniture. You can move it to another part of the, the building to, um, to commence work wherever you're about to be building. Um, it's about 10 feet in diameter. Uh, so, and the, the, the main beam here is about a foot in diameter. So you've got a 10 to 1 ratio. So that means that um, a 50 kilogram person could, or it would have been a man, of course, in those days, um, would be able to lift 500 kilograms of weight with this one. So it's a significant piece of kit. It's certainly the oldest piece of wood that you'll touch today. Um, so, <laughs> so this is from when it was built? Well, this, um, this piece of wood, um, uh, this would have been about uh, roughly a hundred years old when it was put in here. So this would have been a sapling at the time of the Norman Conquest wow. in 1066. So it would have been a small tree growing in the ground and then they took it out uh, roughly a hundred years later uh, to use here. Uh, and it would grow into that thickness. So, um, was it deliberately shaved to have these sort of flat sides or is that just how it's naturally? I, I think it's just yeah how they would have they would have shaped they would have shaped it a little bit. There's a you see that groove in there? That's yeah. um there probably would have been a metal band in there perhaps. Uh, and it would have been used either as a braking mechanism uh, or, or to attach the rope to. Um, so this is the most complete one in the, in the United Kingdom. There's not another one exactly like this, or as complete as this. There are some others that, that are partially complete um, in other cathedrals like Durham. Um, where, where else can we have it? Tewkesbury. Salisbury. Salisbury, yeah. Um, so so this not... was left right like here? Well, it was left in the other tower, the, okay. the incomplete the tower, tower that we okay. saw. And it was dismantled and brought over here because it was easier to, to display it. So, but it, it will still work um, uh, if, it, if it had to. But of course, it, it wouldn't be needed today. Yeah. It would have been a They'd be using a crane today. So this would have been the uh, original face of the cathedral before they decided to extend it. So you remember Paul said about... Um, Keep going. Yeah, you know, they kept going and going. And you can see how well dressed this stone is here uh, compared to, say, the bit above that. So it would have been um, intended that this was the, the, the front. So do we know what it would have looked like then? Is there drawings well, of what it was going to be? or We don't really know. No, not really. Um, now, you can see that it's been raining yeah. and the water is now coming along oh, these medieval gutters. So these are uh, from when the abbey was built in 1238. 
That's unbelievable. That is so cool. Look at them go. So they're um, coming outside? Yeah, they're coming, it's running off the roof and coming down here. Yeah. The other thing to notice here is that you've got these tie bars in again here. So if you look on the front of the cathedral and you go out, you'll see the like white um, plates on the front. And that's where these tie bars connect into. And they're, again, they're Victorian. Because the Victorians are very worried about the, the cathedral. They, they started to see it bowing out. But uh, if you look at the, the west front, there is a lean on the front. It's about 26 inches from top, uh, from bottom to top. So it leans out like that. And if you stand in the northwest corner here outside and look across the building, you'll see that lean on the building. And it's deliberate because as you walk through the gate there uh, at the beginning, um, when the, if the building is tilted like that, it makes it appear much bigger than it really is. So it was a visual trick by the um, <laughs> early masons to make it look much larger or much higher. The other thing to notice about the front of the cathedral is that they used a system called sacramental geometry when they were building cathedrals. And you'll see that in cathedrals all over Britain. Um, so they, sacramental geometry was based on um, the theories of Euclid, who was a, a geometrician uh, about 3000 BC. Uh, and he developed a system of triangulation and circles, all of which meant something. So if you take the pinnacle of the cathedral here, you can draw an equilateral triangle right down to that corner, across there to that corner. So. What do you think a triangle represents in church? The Holy Trinity. Correct. Yeah. That was Dad, trust me. He that into me. <laughs> so you've got Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Do, do, do they do that and then, this, then they say, you know no, what, no, I'll tell them no, this. No, no, <laughs> no, no it's, all, it's all planned out. <laughs> so um, circles, you can put circles all the way down the arches like that. Circles is... A symbol of perfection or heavenly perfection. Wow. Um, squares, you can fit squares in onto the front of the building. Symbol of the earth. Wow. And so on. All sorts of symbols. Why is it the symbol so of every, the earth? Sorry. Everything had, well, but, well, I guess that they probably thought the, the earth was flat wow. uh, in those days, probably. Uh, we're nearly at the end of the tour, but one just last thing to show you. Where you're standing here, this is the monk's singing gallery here. So all the way along here, these windows, which wouldn't have had glass in when the place was built, they would have had straw bales or something, mm -hmm. they would have been removed at certain festivals when people were allowed into the cathedral or the abbey precincts, uh, say like Easter or Palm Sunday or that kind of thing. Um, and the monks would have stood at these windows to sing to a cantor who stood on the top of the gate there, up front. Um, but they wouldn't have been able to see those monks. So they would have thought there was a statue singing to them, which are in these niches, oh. which of course would have been coloured and gilded. Uh, it would have been fantastic, really. So that was done purposely? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Was, yeah. So, so a little bit of theatre. The <laughs> singing from these windows. So anyway, we're, we are at the end of the tour now. We've taken a little bit longer, but we started a bit later, so not so as much. Oh, as you're happy with that, we don't mind. Mm. Um, just to say thanks for coming on the tour. Thank you. Uh, Thank you guys. Uh, I hope we've uh, entertained you and you've enjoyed it. Um, and you've, it's also been informative and told you things yeah. that perhaps you didn't realise.